This is the Gambling Gauchos. What is up, everybody? Rob and Ryan, I'm sending you co-host. Rob, mic check? Check, check. One, two, one, two. I copy. What's up, man? Oh, nothing. Just watching the Cowboys struggle with Jeff Saturday. <laughs> uh, legendary NFL coach Jeff Saturday. Ryan, are you on? Gotcha's country. Let's That's ride. Right. Sweet. Um, cool. We will get it started. Before we do, let's give a shout out to our longtime sponsor of Gotcha's After Dark. We've been doing this all season. Been a lot of fun. Most weekends, anyway. Barnett, Howard, and Williams. They are the Gauchos After Dark sponsor. Law firm started by three Texas Tech grads, office in Fort Worth, but they handle cases all across Texas. One of the only law firms in Texas that is certified for Title IX student representation. They've done that at, um, I think, nearly every major university in the state of Texas. Uh, they also do catastrophic injury, and they also do criminal defense, family law. So they hope you never need them, but in the case that you do, they are in your corner, bhwlawfirm.com. Do we want to start with, do we want to go in order from like the college football playoff, New Year's Six on down, or where do y'all want to start? Yeah, let's do that. Let's get TCU out of the way, and we'll talk about Kansas State, and then we'll get to the good bowls, the ones that matter. Okay. Yeah, I was, um, I was pleasantly surprised with the committee's <laughs> God dang it. Hang on. Hey, go inside. Pleasant, my, uh, pleasantly, my yeah. Pleasant. I'll take over. Pleasantly surprised the TCU. No, I'm good. Okay, all right. <laughs> Try to They're help inside out. now. My, my, my co-hosts here in the Cardinal Sports Center studio get a little rowdy sometimes. Was that Marco or Paolo? Um, that, was, that was both of them, Marco oh, okay. and Jackson. Um, I was pleasantly surprised that they gave TCU the three seed. Um, I thought they were deserving of that, but... I, I tweeted this out late last night that Ohio State Michigan is always the most viewed regular season football game, and the committee very easily could have put Ohio State three and matched them up in what would have been, I am almost positive, the most watched college football playoff semifinal in the nine years that they've been doing this, and they opted not to. And I thought that was a good thing for the Big Twelve moving forward that a brand and a program like TCU got the respect they deserved. I was caught off guard by that, but not by the four teams, just kind of how they were ranked three and four there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, they must have watched the fourth quarter while Ohio State just laid down like a dog and got hammered by Michigan. Uh, I like the four. I like the two games. I like the four participants. I hope TCU can make it a game with Michigan. I think they can. Um, we'll see. I, I don't really care how the Big 12 looks in – that game in particular, I'm not a, I'm not like a, I'm not chanting Big Twelve, Big Twelve like the SEC does. Right, uh, Ryan, do you have any thoughts on either the four teams or the order that they're slated in? No, not really. I mean, I think they got it right. I think it's good to see TCU get in there, even with the loss. I think it says a lot about how the Big Twelve is just continuing to shape its view in the public eye. And then, I think you know, you look at that fourth quarter in between. Ohio State and then you look at the one with TCU and it was just two different stories I felt like and I think that plays a big part as well I mean TCU obviously no quit in that game and I I, th I think they're deserving of that three seed yeah and I really didn't even think there was a, a credible argument for Alabama you know they kept I mean they had Nick Saban on to make his case and he kept saying well we don't have any bad losses which is true but TCU doesn't have any bad losses you know, Ohio State doesn't have a bad loss. I mean, I guess their margin of victory was bad, but Michigan's a really good team. And so I'm just like, it's kind of funny that Nick Saban had to be like, well, we lost multiple times, but at least they weren't bad losses. So therefore, we should still be in. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, LSU, had they been at two losses and beaten Georgia, might have had a case. One lost Tennessee, might have had a case. One lost Clemson, might have had a case. But all those teams faltered down the stretch so I mean I, I really think it was not that controversial um and that and that seems to be the consensus I mean they got the four teams right I guess there's some people that think 
USC shouldn't have been punished for playing in their conference championship game, which I can kind of sympathize with to an extent. But once you once you lose by 20 plus to Utah on a neutral field and have two losses, it's kind of hard to justify them keeping that position over Ohio State, in my opinion. For sure. Okay, next up, Kansas State. Of course, Big 12 champs. They get the auto bid to the Sugar Bowl where they'll be playing Alabama. Um, Surely a very inspired Alabama team that wants nothing more than to win the Sugar Bowl. Um, Unless they lose, then that will not be the case. Oh, I can already see Um, it. No. (laughs) Yeah, I I was surprised at the – oh, let's talk opening lines on all these as we go. So Michigan, I think, is nine or nine and a half over TCU, depending on where you're looking. Um, That sounds pretty fair to me. I would have probably thought somewhere in that seven to ten range. Do either of y'all have an early lean on that game? I mean, lean would be Michigan, but I would like to see how that evens out. It's a month till kickoff, so lots of things can happen. I would like to see who's – I don't think there will be any opt-outs, but who's injured, who's healthy, and and all that kind of stuff. Who transfers, because there might be a guy that gets in the portal. Yeah, I would not touch that right now. If it hovered around seven, then I might be interested, but that's that's an interesting number for sure. Yeah, I'm – I'm thinking in the opposite direction. If it gets to ten or ten and a half, I think I'd, I think the frogs will be pretty competitive. I mean, they have been all season. So, um, Kansas State in the Sugar Bowl getting more respect than I thought they would. I think this one opened around four and a half, and now they're they're getting five versus Alabama. And I'm sure that does take into consideration the the likelihood that Alabama will have some opt outs, you know, some NFL guys or or things like that. Um, but yeah, they Kansas State very much deserve to be there. They're the second highest ranked three loss team. I think Utah leapfrogged them a little bit, but you know their loss to Tulane early in the season looked really bad at the time, and was before conference play. And you're kind of thinking, okay, are these guys even going to be very legit? And now Tulane is the group of five New Year's Six representative, and so they're a good team. That loss doesn't look bad. K State avenged the loss versus TCU, and then their third one was to Texas. So. Um, at, at this line, I'm probably leaning Alabama, but another one that I'll wait on just to kind of see how some of those opt-outs and everything shake out. But credit to Kansas State for for beating TCU, winning a Big 12 title. I tweeted this after the game. but They were literally in the 1980s on the verge of shutting down their football program. They were the worst, what we now call Power 5, but like major conference football program in the country. And they've now won three Big 12 championships in three different decades under three different head coaching stints. And so incredible accomplishment for K-State. I was happy that they won, and and they deserve a shot at Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. So I'm looking forward to that game. Kansas State money line. Boom. Hammering Alabama to cover. What? (laughs) Yeah, well. Will Will Anderson isn't going to play. I doubt Bryce yeah. plays. Like, who, yeah, it, yeah. Kansas State money line. Well, they've just not been great away from home for like two years now. And I know this is not a true road game, and I'm not saying like Alabama fans aren't going to travel or anything like that. But you know, they've struggled with not great teams away from home over the last two years, and so I really don't know. I could see it going either way. I could see Bama coming out flat and you know a bunch of backups playing and all that, but I could also see them just completely out talenting Kansas State. So I don't know. Uh, third in the pecking order is the Alamo Bowl. Texas draws Washington. Uh, I do not think there's a line on action for this one yet. Have either of y'all seen a line? No, not on this one. I think this one in Kansas were the two that I didn't I hadn't seen the line on. Yeah, maybe they're I don't know, maybe they're waiting for some kind of opt out news or something. But uh not a lot of controversy there. Texas finishes alone in third place. We all expected them to get that bowl bid. It does kind of I mean, I don't know how their fans feel about it, but this will be their fourth trip to the Alamo Bowl in their last six bowl trips. 
they fired their last head coach for going to too many Alamo Bowls, and now they're they're back again. So we'll see what the spread is. I think it'd probably be pretty close. I mean, Washington had a pretty solid season. Um, is there a number that if it opened that y'all would like it one way or the other? Mm, no. <laughs> I mean, B, it, B. John, Xavier Worthy, Texas is just they, – they, they're good, but they were third place in the Big 12 because of those two guys, and I don't think either of them were playing. So, And I don't know enough about Washington, but – I guess if Texas was a touchdown dog, I would hammer it, but I have no idea what they're going to look like and who's going to play. Yeah, I'd probably lean Washington, just depending on the unknowns. I'm curious what the total is going to be because I think both teams run a lot of plays. Both teams like to air it out, especially if you do have opt-outs on the defensive side of the ball. could be a lot of points. Um, by the way, before we get too far into this, if you're a fan of a Big 12 school other than Texas Tech and you want to chime in with thoughts on on your team or the draw that they got in the in the bowl matchup, feel free to request to speak and we'll get to anybody who wants to talk. Next up, well, not the fourth place team in the Big 12, but the fourth place draw in the Big 12. Three and six Oklahoma who finished seventh or eighth or ninth, depending on how you look at that leapfrogs everybody and gets to play Florida State in the Cheez-It Bowl. What do y'all think about that? I I have made my thoughts pretty clear on this, but, but I'll just say this. It's not that they jumped Texas Tech. It's that they jumped Baylor Tech and Oklahoma State to get to the Cheez-It Bowl. They're three and six. They finished with one win in November, their last four. They have no business playing in the Cheez-It Bowl. They should be in the Liberty Bowl. I would be more comfortable with Kansas being in the Cheez-It Bowl than Oklahoma. Um, I am very excited for Texas Tech to play in Houston. Very excited for the Texas Bowl. Um, But there were three teams that deserve the Cheez-It Bowl more than Oklahoma. And the team that's leaving to the SEC got preferential treatment again. So, no, I I don't love it. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of instances in sports where we can kind of look at something and you can see through the lines and see that a lot is based on logo or brand. And I, I'm, I'm just kind of baffled by the decision. Um, I think, you know, Rob said it best, you know, Texas Tech ends up with a with a quality opponent and a good bowl game that fans have accessible travel to. I think that's a big win for Texas Tech. But, I mean, Baylor is about to play a bowl game in a stadium where the home team can't even sell it out. And so it just sucks for the rest of the Big 12. Um, And and it just, yeah, it it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It's a really bad look for the conference. I'm not just saying that as a Sour Grapes Texas Tech fan. That's certainly part of it because – I would have preferred Orlando. And I'll get to the silver linings of the Texas Bowl because I don't think that's like a bad draw by any stretch. But basically, every gripe that I've had boils down to what the hell was the point of the regular season? You finished two games ahead of them, alone in fourth place. Like, let's say they finished, let's call it eighth, because they were three teams finished seventh, eighth, ninth with a three and six record in the conference. You beat them head to head. Um, it's not like you went to the cheez Bowl last year and they were trying to reshuffle things. There's literally no reason for it other than the logo on the side of their helmet is the quote-unquote right one. Our, I mean, we have a large fan base that would have traveled to that game. And so I just don't know like why it was even important for you to play your regular season finale. You were bowl eligible. Oklahoma was bowl eligible. Um, you finished higher in the Big 12 because of that game, but obviously it didn't matter for – bowl status and so to me it's just a slap in the face to the players that earned a winning record in conference play beat the Sooners head-to-head finished two games ahead of them on a nine-game conference schedule and they don't get rewarded for it by being able to play in the bowl that's higher in the pecking order and I think some of them probably do 
or, or might prefer to play in Houston. I know some of them would have preferred to play in Orlando. Um, I would guess for most of them, Orlando is like more of a destination. Houston is more of like my friends and family can come watch us now. But I think it's a really bad look to have a departing member, like you said, Rob, leap four teams for no real reason. And then to kind of quote unquote punish remaining teams that uh, finished higher in the conference standings would have done just fine for themselves selling tickets at the cheese it bowl. So it, it kind of pisses me off and there are some silver linings, which we will get to uh, with the Texas bowl. But I think it's BS really. Again, I, I like, I like playing Ole Miss, but this had to have been Florida State saying we want we want Oklahoma uh, in the Cheez It Bowl acquiescing because I really don't see any other reason or or understand why. Now, Oklahoma, Florida State, two programs way in over their skis in the last two years are, are going to play each other, and I guess that's a good matchup. Florida State kind of got through a bad ACC. Oklahoma got stomped by most of the teams in the Big 12. In fact, they have six Big 12 losses. So uh, their last good win was Nebraska. Um, and they're going to have a ton of opt-outs. And I don't know who's playing for Oklahoma. They might get beat by 30 by Florida State. You know what you say to Florida State when they say, we don't want to play Texas Tech in the Cheez-It Bowl? Get over it. Too damn bad. Cry more. And if, and if y'all can't get over it, then we'll invite North Carolina or Notre Dame instead. And they'll play Texas Tech. I mean, I, I just don't get why every other conference and every other school has so much influence in this. Where A and M can say no, we don't want to play Texas Tech. Missouri can say no, we don't want to play Kansas. Florida State can say no, we don't want to play Texas Tech. But Texas Tech just has to sit here and take what's given to them while OU leapfrogs four or five teams above them in the bowl pecking order. And we just sit and say, well, bowl games don't really matter, right? Well, they do. They, they do. And, again, excited about uh, – I, I don't want I don't want to conflate the two things. Oklahoma yeah. going to the Cheez-It Bowl is bad for the Big 12. It's big. All of these people saying, well, we want TCU in the playoff because it looks good for the Big 12. Then why don't you want Texas Tech in the bowl they deserve because it looks good for the conference? Because it looks bad – for a 6-6 six and six Oklahoma team to get preferential treatment because none of the other teams can sell on ESPN because nobody else will be watched because there's not any other eyeballs in the conference? Bullshit. Sorry. Family program. Family program. And we will get to the silver linings of the Texas Bowl. So don't get me wrong. But I also want to address some of the, I guess, fan sentiments about some people are like, well, I don't get why you're so upset about this. Like one, it, it's just the principle of the matter. Oklahoma at three and six should not leapfrog a five and four team. Now there are instances where the bowls don't go in exact order of the standings because you know a team has played in a bowl game last year or a lot of times in recent memory, or maybe they finished the season stronger and won head to head. But like you check every box against Oklahoma, better overall record, better conference record, head to head win. You haven't been to the Cheez It Bowl in or what was formerly the cheese at bowl in like decades. And to the fans that are like, well, you know, it's more affordable to go to Houston. Yeah, it is. And like, we'll probably have more people in Houston than we would have had in Orlando. But like, that's part of the exciting thing about bowl season is you get to go play somebody new, go play in a stadium. You don't normally get to play in. And those were some of the, the peak leech seasons, you know, the holiday bowl in San Diego in 2004, the tangerine bowl, in I think Orlando in 2002 or um, I'm blanking on another one where you, Oh, uh, in Jacksonville, the Gator bowl in 2007. And so to play a program that you've already played in the non-conference in 2018 at a stadium where you've already played that team, you know, Rob, you asked me a couple weeks ago, like what I was looking for in the bowl matchup. And I said, one is a power five team. And two is somebody that, like hasn't been on your schedule recently and isn't going to be on your schedule in the near future, like an Oregon. And that's what is slightly disappointing about Ole Miss is like you've played them in bowl games in recent memory. 
uh, 20 years ago, you played them in a home and home non con stretch, and then you played them neutral site again at the same stadium as the Texas Bowl just four years ago. I would have liked an ACC opponent like a Florida State or Notre Dame or UNC, whoever, you know, the Cheese of Bowl was going to pick. And of course, they picked Florida State. But another thing I don't get from our fans is they're like, well, wouldn't you rather play an SEC school? Since when are we SEC bootlickers? Like, to me, SEC is just a label. And just because Ole Miss plays in that conference doesn't mean there's some elite program. Like, I would put Florida State or Notre Dame ahead of Ole Miss in the, like, relevance, blue blood type status, even though they're not SEC. And so I don't get why that was such a priority for some fans. Like, they're looking forward to playing any program that – happens to play in the SEC, to me that doesn't necessarily confer high status. Like, give me Florida State over Ole Miss in terms of program stature any day of the week. And so I I don't get why Texas Tech fans and Big 12 fans are like, well, at least now we get to play an SEC opponent. Like, I'm not an SEC bootlicker. That doesn't mean anything to me. If you were playing Alabama or LSU, okay, sure. But Ole Miss doesn't really do it for me in that respect. Preach, brother. Um, one more thing, because I, I feel like this is festivist. You know, I got a lot of problems with this bowl selection, and now y'all are going to hear about it. I've alluded to this in the past, but our our fans on Twitter are insane in a good way. They're an absolute force, and I see a lot of chest pounding about how elite of a fan base we are. That we travel really well will take over anybody's stadium. But when it's time to go to Orlando, potentially, oh, well, that's a little bit inconvenient. And we don't have a big alumni base there. Well, too bad. Like, you can play in Houston. You can schedule almost anybody in Houston, any non-conference matchup you want, like you did with Ole Miss in 2018. Uh, You've played in a bowl game in Houston. This will be three of your last six bowl games and you're about to play in Houston every other season when the University of Houston joins the Big 12. So if we're going to be this elite traveling fan base to opponent destinations, we should be able to, especially a higher-level bowl game, we should be able to get up for that and travel out of state. Not everybody, of course, but a large enough contingent of our fan base should be willing to travel and go to places like San Diego for a holiday bowl or Orlando for a cheese at bowl. So that was kind of disappointing to see like, oh, well, this is less convenient, so let's not do it. I, I don't really understand that with all the, like, we'll, we'll take over our opponent's stadium type stuff that we've been promoting over the last couple of years. And maybe this is unrelated, but I think an interesting part of this is you, of course, I'm going to find a way to make this about basketball somehow, but Look, look at the basketball team and the, the experience that they got to have in Maui. And I'm, I'm not comparing Orlando to Maui. I've been to Disney World. But, you know, it's just a destination trip. It's a trip that you can go. Being on the beach when it's cold as balls in Lubbock right now is really nice. It's nice to get away. It's nice to have a big brand that's behind your experience and can get you some publicity like we saw even with the hotel rooms. And so it's just kind of a bummer in that respect. And... I know we're going to talk silver linings, and I do think there are a lot of good ones to this game. I'm I'm not upset whatsoever about Texas Tech playing in this bowl game, but I, I think the missed experience is just kind of a bummer and a, a chance for Joey McGuire's team to go on the road and spend a couple of days together um, before entering a new season is, I think, something that goes a long way for a you know a coach that's heading into his second year. And so I think that part is a little bit of a bummer, um, but I think – you know, the Texas Bowl, still a great opportunity, still a good opponent, and um, looking forward to it. All right, I have one more gripe, and then I swear I'll shut up and we can move on with it. <laughs> the other two alleged pros of playing in Houston that I've seen are um, some kind of benefit to recruiting and that the bowl payout is higher. First off, the bowl payout is like, I think $230,000 higher out of $6 million plus. Uh, sub point B to that, the bowl payouts are split evenly 
among conference members. And so when you divvy up that six million or six million three hundred thousand, whatever the difference is between the two, it's completely negligible. Um, recruiting, the twenty twenty three class already has I don't know twenty eight kids in it, and they'll be signed two weeks before this bowl game is played. The twenty twenty four class will be eleven and a half months away from signing. And I've never read any interview with a committed prospect who said, well, yeah, I was sold on it when they came to my backyard and played a bowl game in my home state. I mean, it's just never been a sentiment relayed from a prospect on, you know, what changed there or how they made their decision. So I think those two things are completely overstated. There are other benefits to playing the Texas Bowl, which I, I'm not trying to just gripe this whole time. I, we will get to that. But I think that, people are kind of fooling themselves that they think those are two like huge pros of playing in this versus Orlando. Um, Cause I just don't think it really makes as big of a difference as they're making it out to be. And we don't get to go to Disney world. Yeah. Like I can go to Houston any weekend and you know, H town, great city, but I can go whenever I want. Orlando, like Ryan said, is a destination. And not just for me. Like, yeah, the fan experience is part of this. But the players, like I would imagine they wanted to go to Disney World instead of like, I don't know what you do in Houston. I'm not from there. The zoo? But yeah, or like they might go to a Rockets game or something. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, like or- Orlando, I think, I might be wrong here. Orlando might have more visitors to it as a city, like – per capita or something than any other city in the U S like it's a huge vacation hub for the entire country. And that's where like, yeah, the players, they might be playing closer to home, but most of them have probably been to Houston before or have the opportunity to, and Orlando might've been a better kind of like fun, rewarding destination for them to end the season on. But okay. I'm done griping. The, the next bowl in the Big 12 pecking order is the Texas Bowl. Texas Tech versus Ole Miss. So let's pivot now and talk all the positives of that because I do think it is a compelling matchup. It is a destination that a lot of Texas Tech fans should be able to pretty conveniently travel to. Um, it's disappointing that you got jumped over in the bowl pecking order, but I think this is this is still not like a bad bowl. I mean, we'll We'll get to Baylor in a few minutes here. Um, At least you don't feel like that. And it's an interesting matchup. You know, Lane Kiffin is, he's a character. I was trying to explain him to my wife. She had like heard the name and she was like, wasn't he like part of some scandal? Or I was like, well, I don't think he's really done anything scandalous, but he's controversial or um, interesting. Like I, I was kind of having a hard time explaining Lane Kiffin. Their offense runs a ton of plays. They've got some familiar faces. Zach Evans transferred from TCU. Um, pretty balanced approach offensively. And so it could be a shootout with the way Zach Kitley likes to run his offense and the way they run their offense. Going to be a lot of up tempo, a lot of plays, a lot of action. I don't know what the total is, but I'm inclined to take the over no matter what it is. Yeah. Again, I'm not going to make any decisions now, but the overlooks in play, I. I would be interested to see if Zach Evans plays. Um, well, I guess was he a true freshman last year? This is just year two, so he'll he'll be back. I can't remember. He had such a weird um, right. transition from high school to college. I can't remember if he's year three or year two. Either way, um, yeah, you, you just never know. And they finished poorly. And I know their schedule was backloaded, but they finished poorly across November. Um, I think Texas Tech can absolutely win this game. It's a winnable game. It's in Houston. A bunch of Tech fans will be there. Um, you know the the bowl pout's bigger. Uh, but I just stop it. I, I, <laughs> I love Lane Kiffin. I wanted Lane Kiffin in 2018 from FAU. Um, obviously he went to Ole Miss maybe the next year, so that didn't happen. And you went with Matt Wells. But I think there's a lot and a lot of crossover here. You played them twice in the early 2000s in a home-and-home. You've played them in three different bowl games. You're 0-3 in the bowl games. 
You won the home and homes, and then you lost in 2018 to AJ Brown and DK Metcalf, who just moshed you all over the field. So brutal. There's some history there, at least. Yeah, there is, and and that's another fun part of this is like there's a generation of fan that remembers important Texas Tech Ole Miss games from the 80s. There's a generation of fan that remembers important games against Ole Miss from the early 2000s. And then more modern, you know, the 2008 Cotton Bowl and that non-conference game in 2018 um, that didn't go your way. But, uh, Ryan, what are your initial thoughts on Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin, and just kind of the, the bowl game and the bowl matchup as a whole? You know what I like most about Ole Miss? What's that? They run the damn ball. They do. They've got two dudes that yeah. would be top like three, legit power five starters anywhere. Top three teams in the country per rushing yards per game. Air Force, Army, Ole Miss. They do not mess around on the ground. And I think that that is going to be a really fun matchup in this game. I think it's going to be one that challenges Texas Tech, especially without Tyree Wilson. But Texas Tech's rushing defense has been up and down throughout the season. And so I think playing one of the more explosive and dangerous rushing teams in the country is going to be just a really exciting opportunity for you to prove what brand of football you want to play going forward. They're third to only two service academies in rushing yards per game. Yep, that's right. That's crazy because obviously the service academies throw it like four and a half times per game on average. And Ole Miss probably still throws it, what, 40 times a game? And they just run it, you know, 55. I'm, I'm making those, I'm completely pulling those numbers out of thin air, but they run a ton of plays just like you do. And so they're not just like a exclusively run the ball type team. So the fact that they're still able to rack up that many yards obviously means that they're good at it. Zach Evans has been in college football since 2020, so I would assume he's heading to the NFL. Yeah, I wonder if he'll be on a, a pitch count if he does play. Yeah, do they'll use him in the first half? <laughs> yeah. Ole Miss throws the ball 28.8 times per game. They run it 47.6. Oh, okay, they're not they're not as balanced as I thought. Um, That's crazy. Well, yeah, so I mean that means – Obviously, you have to stop the run and kind of put them in third and long and make them throw the ball. Um, I, I'm not trying to make you do homework on the fly here, but I guess I, I guess I'm remembering more like the Matt Corral era where they probably threw it a little bit more. Um, but anyway, yeah, that is going to be a tough test. And like you said, the run defense has been really good at times and also kind of been gashed at other times. So Ole Miss, obviously more talented than, but maybe is more kind of in the same – style as Kansas or um, Texas or Oklahoma in terms of like obviously prioritizing running the ball and then clearly being pretty pretty freaking good at it. So, um, yeah, those young guys, Isaac Smith, Joseph Adetere, who have gotten some playing time in Tyree Wilson's absence and the linebackers, Muddy Waters, are going to be huge in this game. I think it'll be all about you know, can you put them in spots where they have to throw it? And then when they do that, can you can you disrupt it and maybe force some turnovers? Yeah, and I, I this game started basically at a pick 'em uh, on action. I guess that was just Brett McMurphy saying that, uh, and then FanDuel had it at uh, three. So I I would probably get it there. Um. We'll see who plays for everybody in the next few weeks and then make some bigger decisions. But I, I like the matchup, and I, I'm excited, and I'm sure Tyler Shuck will be the starter, and you'll go on from there. Yeah. I think you better try and just make Jackson Dart beat you. I, I think they've proven that they can be one of the best rushing teams in the country, and so – You've got to just put it in the hands of the guy that's thrown 18 touchdowns and eight interceptions. They're not bad numbers uh, by by any you know shadow of a doubt, but they are numbers that show that he's a guy that can throw it to the other team if you put pressure on him. Yeah. Um, 
kind of also interesting. Last season, you get Mississippi State, and I think we're nine or nine and a half point dogs. And of course, went straight up in blowout fashion. Actually, uh, be kind of interesting to beat the two Mississippi schools in back to back years in the bowl game. Uh, that I think that's another part of this that makes it compelling. That as much as it doesn't necessarily move the needle for me, just because they're an SEC team, it will to other onlookers. And if you finish two seasons in a row beating SEC programs, and it also happens to coincide with the first time that you've reached two consecutive bowl games in nearly a decade and won two consecutive bowl games in nearly a decade, you know, that's certainly a feather in your cap going into the offseason and just kind of another um, gold star you can give to Joey McGuire on year one that I, I think we already agree is a success no matter what happens in the bowl game. But that that is something to consider two elite tailgating fan bases. And so I think the the atmosphere in Houston will be good. I didn't I didn't get to go to the Liberty Bowl last season, so I'm not sure, you know, how well each fan base traveled, but you know, reading the the message board stuff and Twitter stuff, I don't think Ole Miss fans are like super jazzed about this. But I also think Houston is going to be pretty accessible to a lot of their alumni bases, and they're kind of like Texas Tech and the fact that they're a passionate fan base. And so I still think they'll have a good showing in Houston. And I'm, I'm really confident Texas Tech will too, because again, this is more convenient for a lot of your prominent alumni bases. So I, I hope that it's you know good energy in the stadium, a lot of fans from both schools, and that'll of course add to the atmosphere. We got jolly old Big Hen in the spaces. What do you got for us, Big Hen? Man, uh, it's been a it's been a wild Sunday. I had it. I had my Sunday ruined by a uh, cheese based snack, as opposed to having it ruined by having to watch Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury play football. Um, just a fun fact. I'm curious if this is true or not. I got a buddy at Ole Miss, and uh, he said that. They have played since 2000. They've played Texas Tech six times, and in that same time span, have only played Tennessee five. So, uh, is this a new rivalry that's brewing? Just curious. I'd have to go to Winsipedia on that to double check. I know you've played them at least four since 2000. Yeah, it's four times since uh, 2000. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. Matchups five and six aren't coming to mind. But yeah, if they're in the opposite division from Tennessee, I don't know how many times they would have played Tennessee either. But um, they would probably tell you if you posited to them that this might be a a budding rivalry. They would tell you that Texas Tech is completely beneath them, and because we're not SEC, that you know we're Group of Five and all that crap, and so. I feel like it takes two to tango on a rivalry, and I don't think that I don't think we muster enough um, interest and all that from them for them to go along with it. But but I like your line of thinking on that. Texas Tech and Ole Miss have played six total times, with the first matchup being in '86. Ole Miss and Tennessee have played six times since '04. So your buddy was not quite right. Probably drunk. <laughs> Homest among us, right? Uh, I think that 86 game was an Independence Bowl. And in the mid-80s, you were dreadful. That was probably your best season of the decade, if I had to go from memory. Because that was, that was Jerry Moore era and it was not good that's like the only decade that competes with this past decade is like your worst one ever in terms of conference win percentage and all that good stuff but yeah there there is some shared history like i said there will be a lot of texas tech fans that remember bj simmons and cliff kingsbury out dueling future number one overall pick eli manning so in that respect, you know, it is kind of better than it just being like some totally random school that you've never played before. Although I do see the flip side of that coin because I think it is fun to to play new teams. And uh, it would have been cool to play Notre Dame in the Cheez-It Bowl. 
you, you beat uh, you beat their B team in 1932. Texas Tech used to have a – or Notre Dame used to have a, a B team. And so it would have been fun to see Notre Dame try to avenge that loss 90 years later and for the two varsity squads to square up. But uh, it is kind of cool having a little bit of shared history with Ole Miss. Or what are some other bowls we got? Let's start running through them. Um, Mizzou ducked Kansas in the Liberty Bowl. So the Jayhawks will get the Hogs in Memphis. That should be a pretty compelling matchup, I think. But I wish it was a, a border war revival. I love this game, but how bad does Dorkowitz look that he tweeted out he's not scared of anybody and we'll play anybody anywhere, and then they're not playing in the Liberty Bowl? Yeah, it's weak. Um, Was there a line on that one yet? No, no, at least not on action. I'm sure it's posted somewhere, but both squads are 6-6. Six and six. This is a spot where... This is a huge deal for Kansas and for Arkansas. They've got to be rolling their eyes and thinking, like, this is a joke. I don't know if it'll matter, but Kansas certainly seems like the team with more to play for in this one. Certainly, but I do think that Arkansas uh, needs to kind of pick itself up off the map because they had higher expectations this year, and they kind of faltered while Kansas is playing over expectations right now. So we'll see. It'll be it'll be an interesting matchup. I, I think of all the SEC schools, Arkansas might be the one that actually needs and wants a win. Good quarterback play in this game. I'm looking forward to that. Ryan, did you know that Arkansas is the only state that's mentioned in the Bible? I did not. Yeah, in the Old Testament, it says, Noah, remove the cover from the ark and saw. Wow. Rob Rob loves that one. Speaking of the Bible, SMU versus BYU. Oh, yeah. What's that is the line on that one? Um, Let me try to find it real quick. But uh, that, uh, you said SMU versus BYU? That's right. Okay. That one is, oh, wow, SMU minus two and a half. Go Cougs. BYU, another kind of disappointing team this season. I just remember that that non-conference matchup with Baylor. You know, it was a ranked matchup, and both teams had high hopes for this season. And BYU was kind of like, I think they were five and five. They were kind of scrapping for bowl eligibility down the stretch. So, Hopefully they get it turned around before joining the Big 12 next year. But they've got to be a little bit disappointed at that, I would think. Um, staying in the Big 12, Oklahoma State draws Wisconsin in the guaranteed rate bowl out in Phoenix. And this is a disappointing spot for Oklahoma State based on their preseason expectations. But in terms of brand name in the draw. I mean, playing Wisconsin in a bowl game is um, is not so bad. And so I think they also got a good kind of silver lining and consolation out of what I'm sure in the grand scheme is more of a disappointing bowl draw. But they at least still get a big name and a big program in the guaranteed rate bowl. Let me see the line on that one. Um, Wisconsin minus two and a half. And they... Have they named a head coach yet? Wisconsin? Yeah. Luke Fickle. Who took the Wisconsin job? Luke Fickle. Fickle, that's right. Okay, I was blanking. I was like, I know they announced somebody. Um, So, yeah, is is this a new coach bump spot, Rob? No, he's not. I don't think he coaches them in the bowl. Surely not. Maybe. Probably not. But Do you have a a gut feel on – the Badgers minus two and a half? Um, no. No, I don't have any feels really uh, beyond Kansas State money line uh, on these opening lines. I I like this bowl matchup again. Um, Go play. Yeah, go play Wisconsin. Go play Florida State, State. Go play all these schools that have rich histories. Arkansas, Kansas, that's a great matchup. Ole Miss even. Um, I, I really like what the Big 12 drew. Um, 
but Wisconsin, I, I mean, Graham Mertz just they entered the transfer portal, so I really don't know what they're doing either. Did uh did Spencer Sanders hit the portal yet, or is that TBD? I've not seen it's that. TBD technically, I think it's TBD. Yeah, that'll of course be the big question because they're just dreadful without him, and I kind of doubt that he's playing in this game. I don't even know if they have eleven guys on the roster right now. I mean, they have gotten battered by the portal over the last couple of days. Yeah, I'm tempted to lock in the Badgers before that goes above a field goal. Um, Things do not look like they're trending in the right direction at Oklahoma State. Both, obviously, this season, the way they've faltered, but program-wide, the way that they've said, no, we're not going to engage in the portal, we're not going to engage in NIL, all the guys that have already announced that they're leaving, and then the guys we presume are going to announce they're leaving, just doesn't look good right now, whereas... Wisconsin, yes, de- definitely disappointing season, but they've at least turned the page. They've got a new head coach named. I don't know. Doesn't seem good for the Cowboys, so I might be leaning Badgers in this one. Um, is that it for Power 5 on Power 5 action? This is the worst one. Poor Baylor. Um, Dave Aranda last season won the Big 12, won 12 games, which was a school record won the Sugar Bowl. They were preseason favorites to win the Big 12. They were the, I think, the coaches and maybe the media's selection to win the Big 12 again. They parlay all that into a 6-6, six and six losing record in conference play. And this is just horrible. They have to go play their bowl game at their arch-rival stadium in Fort Worth against Air Force, which is – a group of five team, which is kind of disappointing for a, a power five team and a bowl matchup. But Air Force also isn't a slouch. Like, they won nine games. They've been very competitive with good teams. I think they beat Washington State a couple years ago in a bowl game. So this also isn't like just an automatic Baylor dub to salvage a winning record and at least win a low-level bowl game to end their season. I think Air Force might actually have something for them. But – Hey, for all the disappointment of not going to the Cheez-It Bowl, at least you're not Baylor. And Baylor had more of a right to go to the Cheez-It Bowl than Oklahoma did. <laughs> I mean, Yeah, they beat Oklahoma in Norman. Yeah, and they, they were 4-5 and five in conference play. Oh, man. It, because Oklahoma beat Nebraska bad, that's why they're in the Cheez-It Bowl, I guess. It, it is pretty amazing. Um, well, this is, a, this is a rebuttal to the... Texas and OU fans who have convinced themselves of these officiating conspiracies and that the conference just has it out for them on their way out. Yeah. If that was the case, it would have been Oklahoma playing in the Armed Forces Bowl or whatever bowl this is against some group of five team, not Oklahoma jumping five teams to get the most prestigious bowl left on the on the table. So it, it should have been OU in this bowl game. That would have made me really happy. One hundred percent. And if if anybody should be upset about their about their bowl, you just said it. It's got to be Baylor. Just talk about all the wounds you have, and then pouring salt all over them. Um, you don't have a defensive coordinator. I don't know that you'll have an offensive coordinator by that time this bowl runs around. A lot of open jobs still that Jeff Grimes could go take. I I would feel really bad if I was a Baylor fan today. But you made a bowl, so congrats, I guess. Well, dude, and I know everybody jokes about this, and it's overused, and so like you know, we use it ironically when we say rent free and Super Bowl and all this stuff. But look at Baylor's season; like their bowl game isn't going to be their Super Bowl. They lost to their arch rival TCU. I get, I man. I guess they beat a not so good OU team in Norman. But I swear, I think them winning in Lubbock for the first time in 32 years was their Super Bowl this year. Game of the year. Like they have nothing, to hang, they have nothing to hang their hat on this season other than that win in Lubbock. It, so I think that's kind of funny. I mean, I wish you had won that game. Obviously, I'm not trying to cope here. I wish Texas Tech had beaten Baylor. But man, to go from Big 12 Sugar Bowl champs, 12 wins, to this is kind of rough. Like they do not have anything to hang their hat on this season. Zero things. 
And, Ryan, what do you think? And everyone's leaving in the transfer portal, and that's, that's cool too. <laughs> yeah, I I almost genuinely feel bad for for Baylor because this is just so brutal. I mean, we're we're sitting here talking mm. about missing out on a destination, and, and Baylor is getting sent to Fort Worth for their bowl. I mean, that is just brutal, and so it it feels like a slap in the face to them, but. I mean, when when you've been the team that you've been this season, it, it's hard to feel, you know, overly upset about it. But it, it's a pretty brutal draw. Even even being on the outside looking in, I I almost do feel bad. Almost, almost, almost. Yeah, they were. You know, as the bowl games were trickling in, and you know, Rob and I are making noise about how Texas Tech deserves to be in the Cheez It Bowl. They were there were Baylor fans responding to us like, yeah, I hope you guys don't get jumped over for that because then we can go to the Texas Bowl, and so that's where I, I do want to like step back and say we're not complaining about the Texas Bowl because that's still a pretty good draw, all things considered. Absolutely, there are teams in the Big Twelve that are wishing that they were in the Texas Bowl against Ole Miss, and and Baylor is one of them. So, um, yeah, Ryan, you said that well. You almost feel bad for that fan base. But, hey, I hear that one of the best things about Waco is that it's easy to get to Dallas from there. And so hopefully a lot of their fans are able to make the trip up to Amon G. Carter. That has to be the worst. Can you imagine going to, like, Kyle Field to watch Texas Tech in a bowl game? Or or Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium? No. I don't know if I could. Mm, I mean, I – yeah. That'd be tough. I'll try to bury some double T flag somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Would they let Texas Tech run out of the uterus? I, uh, I guess if we're the home team in that bowl game. You have to be, right? I, I don't know. Sense. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think we'll ever have to do that. Um, I did no. see some Baylor fans, though, talking about – this was funny, like fast-forwarding to 2025 when – Sonny Dykes is six and six, and TCU has to play in the Brazos Bowl um, at McLean Stadium, which, of course, doesn't exist right now. But um, that would be kind of funny if if the tables were turned. But think, man, that is just it's brutal. I think if a Big Twelve city did have a bowl that didn't already, it it would be. I, I could see Waco. I could see the Brazos Bowl. Yeah, the. Um, the Chip and Joanna Gaines. Yeah. I think somebody, I think the fans called it the, the Shiplap Bowl. The Mongolia Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> Man. Um, yeah, so that kind of wraps it up. I mean, overall, a lot of compelling matchups. You know, you have two teams in the New Year's Six, which is a good thing for the conference. Like you said, Rob, we're not, like, going to go chant Big 12 anywhere. But, I mean, I have to say, I, look, I'm not, I'm not pulling for TCU – I wish they would have not made the playoff, but it's not the worst thing in the world that last season an incoming Big 12 team made the playoff, and this season a member of the Hateful Eight made the playoff while like nobody from the Pac-12, either remaining or departing, is making it, and Texas and OU aren't making it. So, again, I do think it hopefully bodes well moving forward for when hopefully Texas Tech is in that position and – Hopefully they'll get respect when it comes to whether they're in the top four getting a bye week or top eight and getting to host the first round in Lubbock. Um, I was glad that TCU did not deserve to get jumped by Ohio State and or Alabama or anybody else. And so in the end, I do think it's a good thing for the conference to get the respect it deserves. And them staying in the playoff and Kansas State going to Sugar Bowl – I think kind of helped everybody else's bowl matchups. So I'm looking forward to bowl season. Absolutely. We'll have a full bowl preview in the next uh, week or two. And I would assume BJ Simmons will be making his triumphant return to pick bowls with us uh, at some point. I heard uh, Lane Kiffin might be coming on the gambling gauchos or at least that people wanted that. Yeah. If he's not scared. Yeah, some are saying. Um, we've got a pretty pretty lax month of basketball in between now and the Texas Bowl, so everybody should be able to focus 
on Ole Miss. Shout out Big Hen. I know he's already focusing on Ole Miss. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I didn't mean to sound all negative earlier. I, I wanted the Cheez-It Bowl. I think you deserved it. I think the players deserved it. Having said that, I've already got a hotel, a ticket to the game, a plane ticket. So I'm going to be there. Absolutely. And hoping for a good game. Yeah, it's a compelling slate of bowl games across the board. And I think, well, one last note on Texas Tech. I, I think you win this game and with a right shuffle across the country in bowl games, you've got a real chance uh, at ending in the top 25 enjoying McGuire's first season. And so I think that's cause for excitement. I think with all the things, you know, surrounding what could have been, I think that's a that's a really good chance for you to just kind of continue the trajectory of this program um, with, with a win to cap off a successful first season. You, you think so, even with five losses, that potentially with a win, Texas Tech could be ranked in the top 25? Yeah, I mean, Ole Miss, is, the end of the season for them, I, I think might bump them to a lower rating, maybe even receiving votes. But I, I think there's a chance with, with some different shuffling and teams losing where half the team's sitting out. And so I hope it happens. Um, it would be cool. And I also wonder, even if you don't quite finish the season ranked, could you make some noise in terms of like preseason rankings next year which obviously don't matter other than like in terms of perception but as you're as you're climbing your way out of arguably the worst decade in program history I think you'll take small victories like that and even if you're not ranked preseason next year if you start out receiving votes and you know you're in that 28 to 32 range or whatever then you can pretty quickly work your way up if you if you can win some games in the non-con so uh, that is another thing I hadn't even really considered yet that that might be um, in the cards here if you can if you can pull it off for Ole Miss. And who knows what Oregon will be ranked like going into next season, which gives you a chance to play, uh, you know, a top twenty-five matchup right out of the gate. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I would think they're pretty solidly in the top twenty, top twenty-five minimum next year. So. Yeah, that gives you a huge opportunity. Just like this year, I mean, it's it's different with Houston because they're not nearly the the brand name Oregon is. But um, yeah, that definitely created early momentum for McGuire this season when Houston, even though they were only twenty four, came to the Jones and you were able to notch that win early in the season, early in the McGuire era. You know, can really only benefit you. So I hope it happens. Any final thoughts, Rob? I'll have plenty of final thoughts, but I'll give them to you on the next podcast. All right. If you were going to sue the Cheez-It Bowl for this egregious malpractice, who would you uh, retain for your legal services? Uh, that is an obvious answer. Barnett, Howard, and Williams. Um, I don't know that they've sued Cheez-It before, but I would totally trust them uh, going against the Giant. Yeah, I think they specialize in suing bowl selection committees. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, hey, new bit on the podcast. Any cheese-flavored snack that you're enjoying, send us a picture of your cheese nips, your HEB brand, Cheez-Its, your goldfish, your Doritos, whatever it is. We are now a pro. Any cheese-flavored cracker or chip that is not Cheez-Its, even though the company probably has nothing to do with the bowl selection, um, they have to reap the consequences of snubbing us out of a trip to Disney World and a shot to beat ranked Florida State at the end of the season and avenge the, I think it was Billy Joe Tolliver era, loss to the Seminoles. And they also stole your, your Masked Rider tradition. Now, they probably made it actually even cooler than the Texas Tech Masked Rider, but, man, that would have been fun. And, uh, yeah, if you do want to see the cheese at Bowl, call Barnett Howard and Williams in the meantime just send us tweets of you enjoying any other cheese flavored snack besides Cheez-Its and I guess that's all I got gents love y'all love y'all all right love y'all